Hey guys, this is Ryan from My Fishing Cape Cod. I hope things are going well. This podcast fishing report was originally published on April 9th for members of MyFishingCapeCod.com. Today I'd like to publish it here on YouTube so more people can get a listen. If you'd like to listen to the most recent podcast fishing reports, those are posted on MyFishingCapeCod.com slash podcast. So thanks as always, and let's dive in. Welcome to the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast. The My Fishing Cape Cod podcast is your local source for the latest news and information on fishing Cape Cod. Now, here's your host, Kevin Collins. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast here from MyFishingCapeCod.com. I'm your host, Kevin Collins. Back with you for our first podcast in the month of April, and this will be a traditional fishing report podcast. I know we've been mixing it up a little bit between the fishing reports and also some great interviews with some of our members and other folks around the fishing community on Cape Cod. But this will be a traditional fishing report, and we've got a great lineup of guests for you on today's show. We're going to start off with MFCC founder and creator Ryan Collins. Next up will be our good buddy Bruno Demir from down at Cape and Islands Mitsubishi. Next up will be a first-time guest on the podcast. It'll be MFCC member John Figmick, who will join us to talk about fishing the Cape Cod Canal, among other things. And last but not least, Eric Wisneski from down behind the counter at the Goose Hummock Shop in Orleans. So without further delay, let's dive right into today's program. Well, as usual, our first guest on this week's edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast is none other than MFCC founder and creator Ryan Collins. And Ryan's joining us via the phone as usual. Ryan, how are you this beautiful morning? I'm doing very well, Kevin. Thanks for asking. Right now I'm overlooking a little pond down the street from my house, and it's so calm seeing that you can see the reflection off the trees on the pond. It's just like a mirror. Yeah, Cape Cod Bay at the moment, as I look out my window, is very calm as well. And The encouraging sign that I've been seeing over the last, I'll say, week since Easter, Ryan, is I've been seeing quite a bit of an uptick in boat traffic in front of my house here in the lower portion of Plymouth. So it seems like people are kind of getting the bug and getting their boats wet, which is a great sign. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. I know, I don't remember what day it was, but one of these nice days I was driving over the Sagmore Bridge and I looked down and, man, the canal was packed with walkers and people rollerblading. So, yeah, it's good to see. I know one of the other encouraging signs of kind of summer on the way, Ryan, is the herring run. And I know our good buddy Bruno Demir, we're going to get with him later in the podcast. But he had some encouraging footage of herring showing up on Cape Cod. And I know you make a visit to the the Borndale herring run from time to time. What does it look like down there? I was actually down there yesterday. And I didn't see any herring. And it's my understanding that the Borndale run usually gets going a little later mm-hmm. than some of the other runs in the area. But last year I saw herring at the Borndale run on April 9th, and that's today. So I'd imagine they'll, they'll be in there soon if they haven't already you know, made their way through. At least a couple. I'm sure a couple scouts have gone through there, but I haven't seen the big numbers just yet. Let's talk about some giveaways that you've got going on on the, the site that I know you've made me aware of. you got a youth angler giveaway, and you've also got a trip on the little tin boat that you're giving away as well. Touch on that real quick for me. Sure. This past week, I started up the youth angler giveaways again. That's something we began during the holiday season. We gave away a whole bunch of gear throughout the holiday season to anglers from MFCC who are 18 years of age or younger. And it had been a couple months since I've done one of those giveaways, but Mike Meehan, who's a member of MFCC, donated a tsunami rod and reel to be given away to a youth angler. So we got him going again. And Alden, uh, Alden Wang, I believe that's his name, he won the rod and reel as well as some other items this past week. And I'm going to continue doing these giveaways throughout the spring and summer. So if anybody's listening who's 18 years of age or younger, there's a blog post that's on the site right now. If you go to the blog, you'll see it. And just leave your name in a comment at the bottom of that post, and I'll include you in the next giveaway. And the Little Boat giveaway, 
that is a very fun one. I'm looking forward to this. I'm giving away a spot on a little boat trip during 2021. And I'm flexible with the dates. And the way that works is if you're a member of MSCC, you can go to the forum. You'll see a thread. It says Little Boat Giveaway. And just leave a comment in that thread. And on April 15th, I'm going to pick a winner. That sounds pretty good, Kevin, doesn't it? Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to win a couple of little boat trips with you over the last couple of years. We've always had fun. Yeah, I, I think you can probably offer a little word of advice with regards to standing up in that little boat. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a, you know, a trip for one, Ryan. You and your, your lucky raffle winner. It can't be any, any more than that, I would say. Yeah, I think so. You can't fit too many folks in that little boat. Although, if you remember growing up, my dad would fit myself, my mom, and my sister in the 12-foot yeah. boat. Yeah, but you guys were you guys were small. So, the, you know, two grown adults, like two grown men especially, I think that's pretty much the max for that boat. I think so. I think so. So stay tuned. April 15th, we'll see who wins that trip. You also have a, uh, a distance casting competition coming up the early part of May, about a month. Just want to give you a second to touch on that as well. Yeah, back in the fall, Mike Marcus, he's a member from MSCC. He posts a lot in the forum, resident of the town of Barnstable, I believe. Mike began a surf casting distance competition, and we got maybe close to 20 people down at Sandy Neck in Barnstable last fall and had a just a long-distance casting competition, and it was a lot of fun. So Mike decided to do it again, and I think we have even more people registered for the May 8th distance casting competition. And if you're a member, if you're listening to this, if you're interested, you can go to the forum. Um, I don't recall the name of the thread off the top of my head, but there's information in the forum, and you can contact Mike Marcus if you would like to register for that. His username in the forum is Striper Madness. So you can send him a private message and get all the details. But I'm looking forward to that. That'll be fun. If you're around, Kevin, feel free to you know be part of that. And there's an October surf cast tournament, too, along those lines where you're talking about long casting. But there's an October tournament coming up as well, too, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll be here before we know it. I know we're kind of jumping right to the fall run all of a sudden here, but we decided to do, do an October 2nd one-day surf casting tournament. I've been talking to, again, Mike Marcus and Eric Cronin about the possibility of doing something like this, and we're going to move forward with it. And it's probably got to be on the smaller side for at least the first year here. But we're looking for 25 teams, two anglers per team, and it will follow the format of the highly successful Cheeky Schoolie Tournament, where it will be a one-day event, again, October 2nd, probably fish anywhere from shore on Cape Cod, and the team with the most inches of fish at the end of the day, you know, all catch and release, but you'll measure any fish over, you know, let's say 28 inches that you get, your four biggest fish, so to speak, and that's how we'll do that tournament. We have a link in the forum where you can sign up for the October 2nd tournament. It's $25 per person. And all that money that we're getting from these pre-registrations is being donated to the Cape McCoy Fund. Are you familiar with that? Can you educate me? Yeah, it was last week or the week before down in Chatham there was a house fire. And Cape McCoy lived in the house with her three kids. And she's a single mom and a U.S. Navy veteran, resident of Chatham, obviously. And they've been displaced. So they're living in a motel right now in Harwich. And they're just raising some money to just kind of help them, you know, get started back up and get back on their feet. So I know uh, several thousand dollars have already raised by the general public. And we're going to donate all the pre-registrations for the October 2nd tournament to that fund. So I know we already have over $400 worth of pre-registrations, and I know at least a few other uh, members, which is really cool, have donated on, on their own. Um, so all together from MSCC, I think we've probably raised at least $700, and any new registrations for that tournament will be included in that amount, which I think is really cool. You know, any 
And the, the person who brought this to my attention was Dex Chansey, who's another member. So anybody who's listening, if you ever hear about something like this happening, I know we won't be able to raise millions of dollars for for people, but you know, I'm always happy to try to put something together to at least raise a few hundred or a few thousand dollars for any anybody who's in need or any good cause for that matter. Yep, people helping people. That's kind of what the community here on Cape Cod is all about. Ryan, getting back to the fishing, I know we just hit on a bunch of little administrative bullet points that we wanted to get out there. But let's talk about freshwater fishing for a second. I know you've been doing a little bit yourself. Give us a quick freshwater report. Yeah, I'm here right now at a pond. So hopefully I'll get some uh, some activity at some point this morning once we're done talking. But in the forum, I, I noticed some really impressive catches that I just wanted to highlight. Sean Lawrence got into some white perch this past week. And white perch are fish that typically hang out in brackish areas and I think they spawn this time of the year so they go back in the estuaries they go back kind of in the same areas that the herring go to but they're members of the striped bass family of fishes and they put up a great fight I think Sean caught his on a little curly tail grub and he was fishing again way back in the estuaries probably on a spot where he also probably would have chances with holdover stripers Tyler Martin put up some really good photos this past week of some successful trips on Cape that he had trout fishing. Obviously, trout fishing during April, this is prime time for trout fishing right now. And I know you spoke to Tyler recently, correct, about uh, his lures that he's making. Yeah, has that podcast been posted yet, or is that kind of in the works still? It's in the works, but I'll probably have it on the site maybe next week. Yeah, I'm looking forward to listening to that. Soft plastic lures in particular. Yep. That's what Tyler's been making, which is really unique. So he got into some trout this past week, and I know a lot of people around the community have been getting trout. And then Tim Donnelly put up a nice post. He went shell fishing in Venice, and I guess it was the best shell fishing he's encountered all year he got his limit in no time at all so that was also encouraging to see and that's something i know you enjoy doing kevin yeah i got my shell fishing license ryan for the first time during this coronavirus year of 2020 and proudly renewing this year and i'll be back out there with my rake in my bucket and looking for steamers and mussels and quahogs and clams it's a great way to spend you know a nice afternoon out on cape cod bay that's for sure absolutely Absolutely. Ryan, a couple other things I wanted to hit on real quick before I let you go is I know we've got some group trips here in the spring. Uh, I know Haddock is on your mind and and organizing maybe some group trips for Haddock and also TOG as well. Can we just get a status report on where we stand with that? Sure. So Captain Cullen from Cape Star got a brand new boat for this season. It's the same exact boat that he had last year, the 27-foot conch, but it's brand new. Everything's built brand new. And he just got the boat recently delivered. And as things are right now, of course, it was running a little behind schedule. So the Haddock and Tog trips, which I am still hoping we have during late April, I'm not sure on the status just yet. Colin's still, you know, wiring up the boat, putting the electronics in. So I'm hoping those trips will happen. But... I can't say whether or not they will just yet. So stay tuned. I will be sending out emails to the members with regards to the status of those trips over the next 7 to 14 days. Now, the um, rest of the group trips, the stripers, you know, we'll start those up in May. We're going to do some for sea bass, and I have some dates for tuna. So those will be, you know, we should be good to go by then. It's just these first few trips here in April that we're just hoping that we get the boat ready in time. Well, that sounds like a plan, Ryan. And I know the last thing on our docket is squid. I know that I talked with Bruno a little bit earlier this week on the phone, and he's keeping a close eye on the water temperature. It's been rising at a pretty good clip. It's it's risen 6 to 8 degrees in some spots since we've taped our last podcast. So Cape Cod Bay and, and the areas south, they're warming up. Uh, what are you hearing about squid, and when do you expect them to really show up? Last year, I know guys on the site started catching squid during the last week of April, mm. and there probably were some caught before then, 
So that's when I heard about it getting going. Last week of April and first week of May. So, you know, that's right around the corner. And I'll also be going after some tog during late April and early May as well. You know, those are two of the first saltwater species. Well, of course, with haddock um, as well that we can go after. So squid, yeah, end of April. So probably another two and a half weeks, I would think we'll have some chances and we'll start hearing about people catching squid as they move into spawn. All right, Ryan, I'm going to let you get back to your pond. I'm not going to give away your location, but I know it's a beautiful morning. I'll let you get to fishing, and thank you so much for carving out a little bit of your time to join us. Thanks, Kevin. I'll talk to you later on. Have a great day. Well, next up on this week's edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast is our good buddy Bruno Demir from down at Cape and Islands Mitsubishi. Bruno, I know you're on the road this morning, but thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, good morning, and hello, MFCC. I'm on the road now heading to the airport, and, uh, Unfortunately, I'm going to have to go to Florida this weekend. Just a brutal assignment to head down to Florida this time of year and get yeah, in the sun, Bruno. Tough being in 80 degrees. But you sent Ryan and I a great video from earlier in the in the week, Bruno. I'll let you talk a little bit about it, but you, you had some breaking news for us back on Tuesday about the herring. Yeah, so uh, driving to work the other day, uh, I, I went through Stony Brook in Brewster, which I always do. Lo and behold, there's herring and big ones and seagulls everywhere flying around looking to get a quick bite. And uh, usually with the herring, the bigger ones come in and then uh, the smaller ones will trail after them. But uh, that was a nice sight to see and that's when I know dandelions are coming out and uh, the fishing's going to be on real soon. And what are you hearing about the water temperature, Bruno? I know you're keeping an eye on that. Well, last I looked this morning, we're already at uh, 46 degrees on the south side of the Cape. The magic number we're looking for is usually uh, 50. So at 50 degrees, you start seeing, uh, the, you know, a lot more activity. So um, looking at my records, 46 degrees, that's warmer than previous years this time of the year so I, I'm gonna expect that the uh, season's gonna start a week or two early this year. And I know one of the things you're looking at in the early part of the season Bruno is the squid or you're looking for the squid to show up so are you anticipating them to show up a little bit earlier as well based on that kind of high water temperature? Yeah you know l like I said in previous podcasts I think that squid season will start early this year typically is really hot the first two weeks of May but uh, you know this is a weird year where we're going to have a full moon uh, the last week of this month with the water temperature warmer than usual I think uh, I think I think the last week of this month and the first week of May is going to be a really hot squid bite and uh, it's a great time to load up have fun with kids and uh, have some bait for your fluke season I know one of the other things you've been keeping an eye on, Bruno, is the flounder bite, especially winter flounder. Have you been hearing any reports out there? I know folks, it's, you know, still getting their boats in the water. There's not a ton of people out there motoring around, but have you been hearing anything? You know, um, I was talking to Max out at Riverview Bait and Tackle in Yarmouth, and they're already starting to sell uh, sea worms and clams, and uh, when that happens, I know... You know, there's, there's guys out there flounder fishing or blackbacks, as we call them in New England. So um, the funny thing with winter flounders, winter flounder fishermen, they, they love to keep their cards close. So you're not going to get too many reports of people catching flounder. That's something that uh, they just don't talk about. But when you see sea worms start to sell, you know they're out there and, and the bite is on. I know you're very passionate about the haddock fishery. It's a great spring fishery here on Cape Cod. you have anything to offer on haddock so far, Bruno? Yeah, I would say as of next week, anybody out there with a boat on a trailer, get out into Cape Cod Bay, um, check out anything near Duxbury Harbor, Selwagon Bank. Um, the haddock season is, uh, is amongst us. 
Uh, I know some local tackle shops already have clams in stock. I know Riverview has clams. Um, get out there, throw your anchor out. Remember the anchor and get a lot of clams. Uh, get some of my cousin Eddie's uh, Monomoy tackle haddock rigs that he's been busy hand tying. And just, uh, just keep dropping fresh clams down. And it's almost a, a chumming method, but... Um, that's that's probably the uh, the first uh, table fan fish you're gonna catch this year is uh, the haddock. And Bruno, do you have anything to offer on the the freshwater bite? I know we're still a little bit pre-spawn, but I know every once in a while you like to dabble and try your hand in the freshwater game as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, from what I'm hearing, it's uh, it's like early pre-spawn on the freshwater, and guys are getting decent smallmouths. Um, your best bet is smaller kettle ponds where the water is a little bit warmer. Uh, it seems like the bigger ponds are going to still be pretty cold water and it, it's still kind of sheltered. But the smaller kettle ponds uh, are having a pretty decent bite on the freshwater side. Well, all right, Bruno. Thank you so much for your time in the report. More importantly, how are things going down at Cape and Islands Mitsubishi? They're going to miss you while you're gone. Oh, they won't miss me. They're going to do just fine. Things are going great. Um, we're actually, we, we dabbled into something new this year and we, we got some, uh, classic 1960s vehicles that we're putting airbag suspensions on and, and tricking them out and modifying them. And, um, we're going to bring those to car shows locally here on Cape Cod and you can check that out on our Facebook. All right, Bruno, we want you to travel safe and we look forward to talking with you on the next edition of the podcast, my man. Thanks, Kevin. We'll see you guys out there. Tight line. Well, our next guest on this week's edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast is a proud MFCC member, John Figmick. John, how are you this morning? I'm good. Good morning. Thank you, Kevin. How's your spring going so far, John? Had a chance to do any fishing? So far, so good. I've been out uh, to chase a few trout in some of the kettle ponds, and uh, be it fall or winter or early spring you'll also find me out digging some clams or going for some oysters and of course i've been out doing that as well i know you're a big canal guy john and ryan leans on you pretty good and you uh, are very active in the my fishing cape cod forum in a variety of canal threads are you looking forward to getting down the canal when will you start to give that a try i am definitely looking forward i i split my time um you know, between surf casting and, and the canal, but I put in plenty of time at the canal. Um, and I will, I'll start heading down there, you know, late part of this month, um, depending on, on maybe when those herrings start to, uh, start to make their presence known. And I'm perfectly happy, uh, in the spring chasing the smallest fish I could possibly hook up with as well as the biggest fish that I could get in the fall. So it won't be long and I'll be there. Do you ever do any holdover fishing, John? I do. Um, I don't do as much as some other people do because I do like to get out to the, you know, to the trout ponds and, and so forth. So once I turn my attention to the salt water, um, that's pretty much what I focus on. But I will chase some holdovers uh, in April if time permits. So talking about the canal, we, we know about the herring run. When do you start to see some activity in terms of herring usually down toward the herring run? I think we're going to start seeing them uh, pretty soon. I will stop by every now and again in my travels and just see uh, over the years when they start to come in. And, of course, we've seen them uh, pretty early already this season on, on other parts of the Cape. We've, we've had some reports in the forum. Uh, about some early scout herring. I haven't seen anything in earnest yet down at the at the Borndale herring run, but I, if it stays this warm, I wouldn't doubt uh, it'll only be a matter of uh, of maybe a week or ten days before we start to see some. What's the the earliest that you can remember? I'll say seeing some, you know, maybe early migratory schooly activity in the canal in terms of bass. I would say, from my recollection, I, I've been chasing things in the canal in earnest for about five years now. But in general, um, what I can remember, uh, maybe about the third week in in April, I, it wasn't me, but I, uh, I do recall some friends of mine heading down and um, you know and getting some some schooly stripers that were on their way in. While we're talking about the springtime, I'll say the early bite, I know Ryan wanted me to get into with you just some advice that you might have 
for fishermen trying to give it a try on the earlier side based off your experience over the last five years or so any advice on techniques or baits or plugs that would be a little different to try in the spring as opposed to the middle of the summer you know the the really early part of the season from whenever someone might want to go down to the canal in, in you know maybe as early as mid-april if they want to venture out that early but certainly from late april and early may i treat that one section of time differently from say mid-may and late may the, the latter part of the spring uh, for the very early part of the spring i like to work the mainland side uh, and I treat the canal as sort of a, a body of water within a body of water. You know, where the, where the water comes out of the herring run, it kind of forms its own little river within the canal. And so I stay from about the herring run down towards the west end on the mainland side to get a chance at those early fish. Doesn't mean they're not in other places. It's just where I like to go. That's certainly some great advice. And then do you want to take us through a little bit as the season progresses? how your strategy might change? Sure. Uh, overall, uh, for me, I'm not one of the guys that you'll find riding up and down on a bike during the during the various parts of the, of the fishing season. I, I have some areas that I like to go to depending on the time of the year, and I will every year add another section or two uh, that I'll really try to learn Um what times are the best and, and what times are not so good. So for me, once the, once the, the early part of the spring herring run is over, I fall back to the Cape side once the fish have spread out, and I'll fish the Cape side from uh, maybe just, just shy of the, of the railroad bridge back to the mid-canal, and that's kind of where I stay for the, the spring and the early summer until the water starts to get really warm uh and then when we get to that time of year i'll spend more time down at the east end um of course there are days when there are fish everywhere in the canal but for me breaking it up into that kind of uh into that kind of a segment tends to work and and uh i seem to have no problem getting something every time i i head out and one other thing john i wanted to ask you about is just your springtime canal setup kind of what you're using and what you would stock in your plug bag if you were going to give it a try down there. So as I mentioned, I, I'm actually happy uh, to catch and see what I can catch for the smallest fish of spring uh, as well as something of size. So when I start down at the canal, I use a pretty light setup, uh, a, a pretty light line, a pretty light rod. I'm not trying to cast to the, to the middle of the canal. Um, you know, and, and as far as the lures go, I, I like the small magic swimmers, the SP minnows, uh, the finesse fish. I kind of laugh a lot when I throw the finesse fish because I think it's the most ridiculous looking thing. I have no idea why they want to hit it, but they do. Uh, and at that time of year, I think about the only thing that matters um, aside from being there when the fish are there is, is speed of presentation. I just find that a fast retrieve works well. Other times of the year, you might have to slow down and twitch and, and jerk the, the lure that you're using. The, the, the early spring part of the, of the run, I think the faster you reel that in, the better. John, can you talk a little bit about your experience with my fishing Cape Cod, kind of how you got involved? Oh, sure. I, uh, as I said, I've, I've always been fishing, mostly surf casting and, and, freshwater ponds and then i did find uh, my fish in cape cod and decided to uh, become a member and you know in that time as far as learning the canal goes and i and i really do believe learning the canal is is a little art in and of itself i think people can be very good fishermen but come to the canal and you know she's a she's a tough mistress when she wants to be um but you know over a period of time uh, Tim Ugarini and, and Henry Sellers have been very generous uh, in sharing their canal knowledge with me in, in you know, emails or texts. Um, and I've spent a, a bunch of time with other MFCC members over the past few years at the canal, uh, Patrick Elliott and Alex Cadet and Marius. Um, we've spent time down there together. So it's been a good place to trade knowledge because I think the canal is one of those places that you just can't learn enough. 
about the various techniques and times and and bits and pieces that that it takes to have an enjoyable experience there the last thing i wanted to ask you about was the forum can you just give us a little taste of what the forum has been like from your experience and how helpful it can be you know the nice thing about the forum uh, at mfcc is that it's not so much a fishing report yes people will you know post hey i got this today or this morning or whatnot uh, and, and I really enjoy that. I, I, I enjoy the learning um, that's possible. I enjoy learning the canal and the various areas of the canal. And, and the forum has really allowed that. You can get fishing reports anywhere, but not everywhere are people willing to share their knowledge. Well, John, I really appreciate you taking the time to join us on this week's podcast and really enjoyed our chat. Hopefully we can catch up again in the not-too-distant future when there's some bigger fish swimming through the canal. I hope so. Look forward to seeing you out there. Well, next up on this week's edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast is our good buddy, Eric Wisneski from the Goose Hummock Shop down in Orleans. Eric, how are you on this beautiful Friday? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, the weather is outstanding up here on the mainland side of the canal. It's about 55 degrees in the southern part of Plymouth. Is it really beautiful down there? It is. Uh, there's a little bit of a wind chill, but it's not bad at all. Uh, not bad. I wish I was out fishing instead of being in the shop, but yeah, it's, that's every day pretty much, right? So I know the shop has been really busy. Was you know getting a hold of yourself and Ian from down there this morning, and you guys were running around like crazy. So that's a good sign that people are getting the bug to get out fishing. Are people doing a lot of freshwater fishing this part of the spring? Oh yeah, absolutely. No, the 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 freshwater fishing scene is is kind of on fire right now. You got a lot of the trout action going on in the ponds that they've stocked, as well as now that we're getting into a little bit warmer temperature, uh, the, the bass fishing is really starting to pick up. Um, you know, uh, for bass, you know, a, a lot of these ponds that are having a herring run, um, they're, they're, they're getting some action as well as the ponds that have been stocked with trout. Those bass are feeding on those trout. So people going after their lunkers, you know, they're tossing big swim baits. Uh, big crankbaits and stuff like that, and they're, and they're being rewarded. Um, and then on the trout side of things, obviously, you know, from you know nice rainbows, they put in some beautiful brook trout this this past spring, uh, as well as some of those bigger holdover browns are, are being caught. Um, people tossing mostly spoons, little uh, lipped swimming plugs like Rapala's, Baker lures, stuff like that. Uh, those have been those have been producing really well, as well as the fly fishing. Now that we're uh, coming in, uh, you know, middle of April, we're getting a lot more insect activity. Some of the hatches are are starting to pop off. Some early caddis, some uh, larger midges, as well as some early mayflies, um, and and that's that's starting to. Uh, some fly guys are really starting to see some good dry fly action out there. So yeah, no pe- people really should get get out to the ponds. It's it's the time of year to get get some nice freshwater fishing in. And you mentioned the H word, herring, which has been a theme on this week's podcast through several guests that we've had on. And we're starting to see some herring, you know, that mid that mid Cape area, Brewster, East Ham. You've been hearing reports of the herring showing up as well? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're they're definitely in thick in some runs. Some of the others, you know, it's it's a little tidal dependent, so any given time you go down there, they may not be there at that moment. But yeah, no, the herring are in our waters, and uh, you know it's really starting to really feel like spring with it, with that action going around. The ospreys are around, so yeah, no, it's a, it's a good time. Yeah, the herring are on the move, and hopefully, you know, before too long, maybe another couple weeks, as the water temperatures start to increase, we'll probably see some squid, right? Yes, yeah, that, that's that's the other real, you know, early season fun fun uh, time that you can go have. Don't wear your fancy clothes, but, yeah, I know you, you can fill up a five-gallon bucket pretty easily uh, fishing some of those sound side harbors uh, or getting out in a boat and, you know, jigging around some tandem squid jigs. Yeah. I know another thing that I've spoken with Phil about over the last couple of weeks is the shell fishing, and it's something that I picked up uh, during the pandemic. I got my shell fishing license. I'm 35 years old. It was the first time I had ever done it, and I had a ball last year. It was a great I'll say quarantine activity. And I know Phil is always talking to me, you know, trying to get me to come down. You guys have a a plethora of gear to offer the shell fishermen as well. Yep. We, we, you know, we carry a a full range of uh, rib rakes. They're made down in Harwich, real nice, uh, nice craftsmanship on that. Um, Ranging from, you know, just your kind of, 
standard Chatham scratcher, as they call it, uh, varying between six and nine tines. Uh, and then I got some of the bigger baskets as well, uh, either stainless or non-stainless steel. We got, um, you know, the gauges. Um, yeah, so clam and stuff. I don't do a lot of it personally, but it, it is something that you can, you know, you, you can go out and have a lot of fun and, you know, provide for the table too. And I know that, you know, since Easter Sunday especially, we've got a nice string of sunny days, temperatures kind of clawing up into the upper 50s, lower 60s. Have you guys seen a little bit of an influx or a little bit of a stir in terms of your marine service uh, shack out back? Are people starting to kind of unearth their boats and get them ready to go? Oh, yeah. No, pe- people are picking them up, you know, day by day. The spring fever is definitely here. They're they're picking up their boats, and then they're coming up and getting, you know, getting their lures, getting their replacement hooks now because, to be honest, that might be something that people are finding they're going to have to stock up now and get ready before who knows what other uh, delays are going to come later in the season, you know. Yeah, absolutely. You never know what you're going to face. And the last thing I wanted to just – ask you about about briefly is just you know from your experience when do people start really kind of poking around looking for the first migratory fish the schoolie stripers so people kind of already have been okay and and they kind of uh you know the real diehard guys they're they're out there kind of the first week of april pretty much every year in hopes that they're going to get that one scout straggler showing up um, I may have heard of some rumors down by the, you know, the Buzzards Bay area, but I haven't heard anything confirmed yet. But, you know, people are definitely going out there. All right. Well, I'll let you get back to the store. I know things are, are slammed down there. You and Ian are keeping the goose hummock rolling down there in Orleans. But really appreciate your time, Eric. And hopefully we can get you back on the podcast in a couple weeks. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. Big thanks to Eric from down behind the counter at the Goose for joining us for his first ever visit on the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast. Really great to meet Eric and introduce him to all of you. And that's going to put the wraps on this week's edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast. Want to take a moment to thank all of our guests who took time out of their day to join us on this week's show, starting with MFCC founder and creator Ryan Collins, Bruno Demir from down at Cape and Islands Mitsubishi, John Figmick proud MFCC member who gave us some inside knowledge on the Cape Cod Canal. And last but not least, Eric from down at the Goose Hummock Shop in Orleans. That's going to put the wraps on this edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast. Until we chat again, tight lines and take care. Thanks for tuning in to the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast. For the latest local news, information, and fishing reports, be sure to log on to MyFishingCapeCod.com. From all of us at MyFishingCapeCod, tight lines and take care.